morning, everyone. I'm going to get ready to say Happy New Year. Happy Monday. I pray that you have been well on this weekend. I pray that you have been well on this morning. Welcome to your new month of November. We just have one more month before the end of the year, and I want you to stay encouraged. I want you to stay on the wall. I want you to stay in expectation that the Lord will do just what he said he will do. I want you to stay encouraged. I want you to stay looking at life with the glass half full. I want you to understand what your season is. You have to understand that everyone is going to be in different seasons, and so this may be your season to hibernate, or you've been hibernating and sitting on the couch all year long, and this may be your season that you need to grind. This may, may be your time that you need to work on your back end your office uh, uh, at home, or you need to go into the office and figure out your systems and processes, this could be the time that you need to muster the courage to go and ask your boss for a promotion. Remember, every two years, you need to pivot. Statistically speaking, when you are on a when you are working a, a job, when you are on a career path, every two years you need to either be getting a promotion on that job, or you need to be inquiring of other positions because statistically speaking, if you don't move or pivot every two years, you tend to make 23% less than those other people who continue to bounce and not bounce around, but continue to advocate for themselves um, to increase their income. So I don't know what this season is for you. Only the Holy Spirit will know that through the Spirit of the Lord. And so I want you to inquire of the Lord on what needs to happen for you. If, if this is the time of the year where you need to crank it up a notch to finish strong, if this is the time of the year that you need to gain more strategy, is this the time of the year that you need to really focus spiritually and really get your spiritual house in order? Is this is the time of the year that you need to get your financial house in order? Is this the time of the year that you need to be in hibernation? Do you need to be working on your systems and processes? Do you need to be seeing if there's some other position out there with the skill sets and the favor that you have from the Lord with the skill set and the favor heavy on the, the latter part of that sentence, the favor that will gain you ten fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. You got to understand that favor is offered to you, but a lot of times we don't lay hold of it. Favor is offered to us and we're so hooked up on what we see or what a requirement is that we think that we need. We'll count ourselves out, but you got to rely on the favor that is offered to you and really ask the Lord, is this something, you know, if you need, a, 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 if you're raising um fundraiser and things of that nature, and you're inquiring of God to ask him, what person could really help me take care of 50% of this goal that we're trying to get to? And God will let you know who that is, and God will give you favor with that person. The Bible says we pray for God to give us favor with you and with man. And and so how can we ask for favor but then not walk in that favor? You know, we were at the football game yesterday, you know, me and my – um. The girls, we were out at the game, and I don't know what, what made me think about it, but I didn't think that, oh, my God, you can't bring the large purses into the game. And me wanting to match my outfit brought this nice size Gucci bag, and we took an Uber, so there's no way I could leave it in the car. And so we prayed while we were in the Uber. We were like, Lord, just give us divine favor when we get to this game because there's no way I could take us to the car because we've Ubered here, and we're not going to turn around and waste, you know, these these tickets. And so we got close to the gate, and sure enough, one of the attendants was like, you know, hi, ma'am, you know, so sorry, your, ba your bag is too big. And I was like, oh, man, he was like, yeah, you can't take that in there. You're going to either need to take it back to the car or you need, gonna, you need to go to this nearest hotel and they, they can check it behind the desk. Well, I'm not trying to be funny, y'all, but, you know, I don't want to check a, a $4,000 bag behind the desk for y'all to get me. And so we slowly walked away. Another attendant came up and said, um, hey, hey, y'all just walk. Come on, walk with me real quick. So so here's what you what you should do. Do you got a two piece on? Is that a one piece? Is that a two piece? What you should do is have one of them unhook the bag and put it behind your back and go ahead and grab this plastic bag, put all your stuff in this little plastic bag and take your, your purse hook it behind your back underneath your jacket and then just walk straight through because the metal detectors won't detect it, um, won't um, uh, uh let it go off if you just walk on through. And so we went and, and walked behind a car, stuffed the bag under my back, came back in and walked straight through the game. You got to 
ask for the favor than walk in the favor and be an expectation of the favor. Not ask for the favor, believe in the favor on one day, and then go back to your to your regular natural abilities the next day. You have to ask for it and then walk in it. And sometimes walking in it means being intentional. It means being bold. Let me go ask my boss if I can have a promotion or is there another position available in this company that I can move up and gain an extra $10,000 before 2025? Is there a way that I can reach out to someone who is doing and being uh, where I want to be in life and see if they'll mentor me? Is there a way that I can shoot my shot in the DM if I'm a man or a woman? It really doesn't matter. Sometimes men even need to see that you have a, a little interest in them, and maybe they like you as well, but maybe they just need to see that you aren't, you know, as stuck up as what you appear to be, and maybe you have to make that first move. But you have to just really walk in your favor. I want you to really walk in the favor of the Lord in this season. The favor of the Lord is one thing that catapults my life among nothing else. I ask for favor every time I go into a listing appointment. I ask for favor before I send the email. I ask for favor when I'm getting ready to have a tough conversation. I ask God to go before me. And so make sure that not only are you praying for that, but you're also walking in it with intentionality, with courage, and, and, and being moved by the Spirit. And so Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for allowing us to wake up this morning. We thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord God, for allowing us to see this month of November. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask, Lord God, that you forgive us and we ask for repentance of our sins the ones in thought, the ones in deed, the ones known, the ones unknown, the ones, Father God, that we premeditated, the ones that we acted out, any sin that is pending now in the spiritual realm that the enemy has as a judgment against us in court. We ask for forgiveness of that sin in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you renew us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. We ask that the blood of Jesus will wash away our sins. We ask for clarity, Father God, concerning this next season, concerning this last quarter, concerning this new month of November in the name of Jesus. Father God, give us clarity on the steps that we should take. Give us clarity on the season that we are in so we know exactly how we need to renew and not looking to the left or not looking to the right of those around us thinking that we need to be doing what everybody else is doing or we need to be matching the energy of the world. Help us to understand our God-given uh, ability and our God-given assignment so that we're focused on that, laser focused on that and not worried about what someone else is doing because everybody else is on different measures. Everybody else is on different levels. And so, Father, we thank you that you're speaking for us through us. We thank you that you're speaking for us to us. We thank you, Father God, that you're making it plain in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that we will stop wasting time, Lord God, and we will stop being in competition, comparing, Lord God, to those that are around us, comparing, Father God, to people that we don't even know if it's you blessing them. We don't even know if it's a manufacturer blessing or if it's a blessing from God. And many of us are looking around to the left and to the right, and it's discouraging us. And it's having us thinking that you forgot about us. And it's having us thinking that maybe we're not good at uh, good enough. It's having us thinking that maybe we have been forsaken, but we don't understand, Father God, that everyone who who's winning is not winning by the hand of the Lord. There are some people who are winning by their own hand. There are some people who are winning and they, they're so corrupt. There's so much corruptness going behind the scenes. There are some people who are winning and they've thrown everybody that they know under the bus. There are some people who are winning and they are ruining their name. But Father, we know that a good name, Father God, is worth more than rubies. We know that a good name is worth more than gold. So Father, even if we have to finish the race or run this race like, like a snail's pace, like, a, like the pace of a tortoise, Father God, we thank you that not not only will we be able to win it in the end, we thank you that it won't it won't be a 15 seconds of fame. We thank you that it will be lasting, a long-lasting, Father God, victory. And we thank you that we'll keep a good reputation, Father God. And we thank you that we'll be able to pass that down to our children, Father God. We thank you that we'll still be known after we leave this earth, Father God. So, Father, we just ask you to have your holy way, oh God. We give you rule, way, and dominion over our life right now, and we ask you to have your way, Lord God. Tell us who to marry, Father God. Tell us where to launch the business, Father God. Tell us what job to apply for, Father God. Tell us where to put our children in school, Father God. So, oh God, show us every facet of our life in the name of Jesus. We submit every area right now. We no longer want to compartmentalize our faith. We no longer want to compartmentalize the instructions from heaven or which area of life that we give you rule, reign, and dominion over. But, Father, we submit it all to you, and we ask you to have your holy way because, Father, you are Alpha and you are Omega. You know the beginning from the end. Father, we are only limited. We have a limit 
limited understanding, limited sight, limited, Father God, view. But, Father God, your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. The Bible says, so as the heaven is higher than the earth, so is our, your thoughts higher than ours, and your way is higher than ours. So, Father God, we trust in the Lord with all our heart, and we lean not unto our own understanding, but we acknowledge you, Father God, and we ask you to make every crooked path right now in our life straight, Lord God. Father God, we ask you, Lord, to catch us up to the time that we should be at this day, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, that whatever you had in mind before our mother conceived us, before our mother thought about even having a baby, that plan, Father God, that blueprint, Father God, that life, Father God, that assignment, Father God, that walk, Father God, we want that thing. We ask, Father God, that you apply that will to our life. We lay down our will right now. We lay down the will of other people, what they put on us, Father God. We lay down the will that we even put on us, Father God, and we want to run the race, Father God, that you have given us. It's not given to the swift. It's not given to the strong, but Father God, it's given to him who endures until the end. And Father God, we prophesy that we will be the ones that will endure it to the end. We will be the ones that make it all the way to the end. Father God, we've come too far now to give up in the name of Jesus. We have come too far now to give up in the name of Jesus, but we will continue to run this way. We will continue, Father God, to allow you to be a lantern unto our feet, that we will not stumble or fall. We will continue to allow you to be a lighthouse if we're lost at sea in the name of Jesus. We will continue to allow you to bring the people to encourage us and to help us as destiny helpers in the name of Jesus, Father God. We ask, Father God, that you work on the trauma on the inside of us. We ask you that you work on the defense mechanism on the inside of us. We ask, Father God, that you work on the things that we use, Father God, to protect us. But Father God, some of those things have turned into prisons. Some of those things have turned into repellents. Some of those things have turned into allowing us to be an islander. It has worked for us in certain seasons, but now it is working against us. It is working against the plans of God. It is working against the hands of God. And so, Father, sometimes we don't even realize that what we use in one season to protect us is now in another season imprisoning us. What we use in one season as a defense mechanism, now in another season it has become a repellent to the destiny helpers and to the things that you're trying to do. So, Father God, we pray, Lord God, that these these tools, Father God, and these war tactics, Father God, and these uh, 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 um, survival strategies that we have, Father God, in the past that you will show us, Father God, if it is going against your plans, if it is really setting us back, if it is really keeping us on a lower level, if it's really keeping us circling in cycles, Father God, we ask that you break every cycle in our life. We know the difference between cycles and seasons. Father God, seasons have a, a beginning date. Seasons have an end date. We all have to go through seasons, whether it's seasons of pressure, whether it's seasons of building character, whether it's a season of learning stewardship over money, we all have seasons, and seasons are always things that feel good, but they're going to always be for our good because it's something that you allow and something that you orchestrated. But when it comes to a cycle, it doesn't have an end date. It keeps going and going, and many people are in cycles of bad relationships, in cycles of bad stewardship, in cycles of, of, of not even understanding who they are, in cycles of, of getting bad mentorship and advice from people and they've been in cycles for 15 years 20 years 10 years and father god today we ask that you break these cycles in the name of jesus that you give us the uh, aha moment and the light bulb of what has become a cycle in our life father god where it seems like it's getting good and then all of a sudden we go right on back to what it been, what it, what it looks like it seems that we're getting blessed and all of a sudden something set us right back it is a cycle and some of that is because of our behavior some of us are in cycles because of disobedience. We are reaping the benefit of Deuteronomy 28, Father God, in the, the 15th uh, verse on. And we are not reaping the benefit of the first through the 14th verse. So, Father, we ask, Father God, that you forgive us for the disobedience, whether we were disobedient to the call of God, whether we were disobedient to your laws, whether we were disobedient to your commandments, whether we were disobedient to the things that you have outlined, Father God, in your word, or, Father God, if it was was an inherited thing that came down through the bloodline. And so, Father, we inherited that cycle. Whatever the case may be, we ask you now, Spirit of the living God, King of glory, Lion of Judah, that you will break the cycle over the believer's life right now in the name of Jesus, that you will break it in the name of Jesus, Father God. We issue a cease and desist order to every demise 
demonic cycle, Father God, whether inherited, whether developed through disobedience, break it under the blood right now. Break it under the blood right now. Oh, Father God, we call on our angelic assistance from heaven to help us to break these cycles, Father God. We ask, Lord God, that you uproot everything in our life that has not been planted by the King of glory. Anything that has been planted in our life that didn't come from heaven, we ask now that you uproot every demonic planting, Father God. We ask you uproot every weed of depression, uproot every weed of poverty, uproot every weed of, of, of thinking low, uproot every weed of bad decision making, uproot every weed of bad stewardship over money and blessings, uproot every weed, Father God, of, of mediocrity. We ask that you uproot every weed of limitation, that you uproot every weed of delay, that you uproot every weed of anti-marriage, that you uproot Uproot every weed of anti-success, that you uproot every weed of infirmity, that you uproot every weed of schizophrenia, that you uproot every weed of barrenness, that you uproot every weed of divorce. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, we ask that you uproot every weed of worry, that you uproot every weed of anxiety, that you uproot every weed of torment in our mind. In the name of Jesus, Father God, uproot the weeds of our past, uproot the weeds of our ancestors, uproot the weeds of our disobedience, uproot the weeds, Father God, of whatever was prayed over us, Father God. Some of it has been word curses. Father, through the blood of Jesus in the King of all kings, uproot these weeds, Father God, that is causing us to stumble, that is causing us to be in cycles, that is causing us to be mediocre, in mediocrity, that's causing us to be ordinary, that's causing us to be in Lodabar, that is causing us to be like, uh, uh, Father God, the man by the gate called beautiful. Oh, Father, I declare and decree that everybody on this line would need to pick up their bed and walk pick up their bed and walk into the promise that you have for them pick up their bed and walk into the thing that you had outlined for them in the name of jesus father god no longer we be bound no longer we be shackled but father god we ask that you lay an axe a spiritual axe to every chain on this line every chain on this line in the mighty name of jesus oh father god break every train break every stronghold break every evil covenant break every evil agreement break it in the blood of Jesus. Break it by the name of Jesus. Break it by the blood of Jesus. Break it by the name of Jesus. Break it by the blood of Jesus. Break it by the name of Jesus. Father God, let them live. Oh, Father God, let them thrive. Oh, Father God, let them soar. Oh, Father God, let them walk boldly. Oh, Father God, let them run into the promised land. Oh, Father God, let them live a life, Father God, that you have ordained before the foundation of this world. Father God, we have been taught amiss to just settle here. We have been taught to just that our treasure and, and, and the real joy was waiting for us in heaven. But Father God, you teach a new thing. You teach a different thing. You said, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. And your kingdom will come on this earth, Father God, as we apply the laws, as we apply the rules. And so, Father, we thank you for wisdom that's being poured out on this generation. We thank you for wisdom that's been poured out on this prayer line. And we thank you, Father God, that as we continue to take the tips, that the Holy Spirit continues to pour out as we fast and he continues to pour out as we pray and he continues to pour out as we gather together father god that we'll take these little these little gems and we'll begin to chisel our way out we'll chisel our way out of depression we're going to chisel our way out of poverty we're going to chisel our way out of debt we're going to chisel our way out of low thinking we're going to chisel our way out of low self-esteem we're going to chisel our way out of toxic friendships we're going to chisel our way out of anger we're going to chisel our way out of bitterness we're going to chisel our way out of disappointment in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, help us to chisel. Oh, Father God, help us to chisel our way out so we can break out like never before. Spirit, break out so that we can break out like never before. Jesus, you was the perfect example when you rose on the third day. You told us that we can rise up from here, that whatever kept us down, that when life knocked us down, we thank you that we were able to land on our back because if we can look up, oh my God, we can get up. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the get-up anointing. Thank you for the get-up spirit. Thank you for the get-up spirit on today. We will get up, Father God, and run the race. We will get up and stand still. Having done all but to stand, we'll stand right here in the name of Jesus. We'll stand right here, oh, Father God, because we know it's well. It is well. This season is well, oh, God. This situation is well, oh, God, because we don't need strength, oh, God, but we need strategy, and we have been gaining the strategy like never before. Oh, Father God, I see us gaining ground in the spirit realm. I see us running my fast in the spirit realm. Oh, God, it's like thousands of us running. 
who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Give us the neck of our ancestors' enemy, O oh God. Give us the neck of our bloodline enemy, O oh God. Give us the neck of our marital enemy, O oh God. Give us the neck of our financial enemy, O oh God. Give us the neck of our destiny enemy, O oh God. Give us the neck of our healing enemy, O oh God. Give us the neck of our peace enemy, O oh God. Give us the neck of our joy enemy, O oh God. Give us the neck of every enemy in our life, O oh God. Give us the neck of every enemy in our life, O oh God, because we will stand with the victory. We will come out like a heavyweight champ. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. We shall win in the name of Jesus. So, girl, get up. Boy, get up, because we got a race to run. We got victory to celebrate. We got to stand up with the gold medal in the mighty name of Jesus. The race isn't given to the swift. It's not given to the strong. You ain't got to be winning. You ain't got to have strength, but you got to endure to the end. And sometimes maybe you need a battle buddy, just like Forrest, who grabbed Bubba and put him on his back. Let me come get you, woman of God, and put you on my back because we got to run. We got to finish the race. We got to get to the other side of glory. We got to get to the other side of what God promised. We got to get to the land so that we can go back and grab mama and them. We can go back and grab our sisters and brothers. We can go back and grab the neighbors and go back and grab the friends who didn't believe in the God that we believed in. But God is turning our life into a movie reel. He wants all those around us to look at us and say, my God, she really is with God. She really does walk with the King of Glory. He really does walk with the Lion of Judah. God is trying to make your life a testimony of who he is. Let him have his way. Just let him have his way. But you got to do your part. I know sometimes it's, it's hard. I know sometimes it seems like everything, the walls are caving in on you. But sometimes you got to just stand there and know that he is God. Sometimes you got to do everything that you can in your natural and then let him take the super from there. But you got to stop folding. You got to stop going back. If you can just do that, maybe you can run and fast right now, but you can crawl. Maybe you can't run as fast right now, but you can do a brisk walk. But what I need you to promise me is that you won't go back. I need you to make a promise to me that you won't go back, that you won't fold here, that you won't make a house here. I need you to promise me no matter how fast you're moving, you'll keep on moving. Because I promise you, God's going to meet you on the journey. He's going to meet you on the road, but you got to keep moving. You can't stay there. You can't stand there because you'll let the enemy win. You'll let the enemy be able to say that he won when you were given the power. You were given the victory before the battle ever begun. You were given the victory before these things began to break out in your life. And sometimes you got to just let the dust settle. When you let the dust settle, you'll see that the Lord has already smite your enemies. He smite your enemies. He smote them with blindness. He smote them with confusion. He already smite your enemies, but you decided to go back because the enemy fogged you. He fogged the situation and made you think that it was worse than what it, what it was. He made you think that you were the only one on the battlefield, but you had angelic assistance. You had heaven on your side. You had the greater majority because of God before you. He's more than everybody in the world that's against you. You got to stand tall in your authority. You got to stand tall in who you are. You got to prophesy to the winds. You got to prophesy to the dry bones. You got to prophesied to the girl that you, the one that they said was dead. They're laughing and they're saying, oh, and the, Jesus said she was sleeping. And they're saying that she's dead. Who are you going to believe? Because many of you are siding with the adversary. Many of you are siding with your friends. Many of you are siding with the people who don't have no faith. But is she sleeping or is she dead? What does the Lord say about it? You got to know what the Lord has said about it. Do you bury the marriage or do you resurrect it? What did the Lord say? about it? Do you bury the friendship or do you pray over it? What did the Lord say about it? Do you bury the opportunity or you bombard heaven through fasting? What did the Lord say about it? You got to inquire of the Lord and only the Lord because he's the one that knows all things. You got to know what the Lord say about it. They said she's dead. He said she's sleeping, but who will you believe? Can you still ask Jesus to come by here? Come by here, my Lord. Come by here. I know they said my child is dead, but come by here, my Lord. I I know they said the dream is dead, but come by here, my Lord. I know they said that my marriage was dead, but come by here, my Lord. I know they said I missed my opportunity in life, but oh, come by here, my Lord. Oh, come by here, my Lord. Come by here. Can Jesus still come by here? Or will you believe what 
you see with your eyes. Oh, God, come by here, my Lord. Oh, God, come by here, my Lord. Oh, God, come by here, my Lord. In the name of Jesus, won't you make a visitation by here? Won't you throw your address in the atmosphere and say, come by here, my Lord. I dare you to put your address in the atmosphere and say, come by here, my Lord. Oh, God, come by here. In the name of Jesus, oh, God, come by here. In the name of Jesus, have your way in these walls. Oh, God, have your way through this carpet. Oh, God, have your way through this roof. Oh, God, have your way through these veins. Oh, God, have your way through my muscular system. Come by here, my Lord. In the name of Jesus, have your way on this job. Oh, God, come by here. Oh, God, have your way in these finances. Oh, God, come by here. Oh, God, have your way on my confidence level. Oh, God, come by here. Oh, God, come by here in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we give you rule reign and dominion. Oh, God. God, we'll believe in the report of the Lord. You got to believe in the report and the promise of the Lord. There's been so many times in scriptures, even the woman, she was a wealthy woman and the prophet came to her house and he asked what she, what she wanted and she didn't even ask for a child. And they, they noticed that she was childless and they told her that she would have a child by this time next year, whenever she would have a child, she had the child, but it was a child that she didn't ask for, although she received it. And then the child was out playing or doing whatever. And, 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 and it fell sick and it fell dead. And they asked her, well, is everything okay? She said, I got to go see about the man. I got to go see the man who prophesied this to me. Because did I ask for this? I didn't ask for this child, but I, but I have this child. And now I was laying here and she knew the child was dead. And they asked her, well, is everything okay? She said, it is well. They said, okay, is everything well with the child? She said, it is well. But the child was dead. But she said, it is well. You got to know the power in your tongue. I know you're looking at the report. I know what the black and white ink says. I know what the what the lawyer told you. I know what your spouse informed you. I understand in the natural what is going on. But sometimes you got to switch that off and say, it is well. You got to side with heaven and, and look at a dead thing and still declare it's well. Still declare all is well. Because what you do, you know how powerful words are? Even some people who have walked around and did not even know they were diagnosed with uh, 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 cancer or anything, and they were fine. They felt fine. They acted fine. As soon as the doctor let them know they had cancer, all of a sudden, it seemed like they overnight just it progressed because it got into their subconscious mind, and it got down rooted into their belief system. And so now that it's rooted into your belief system, you begin to believe and you begin to act accordingly to whatever that thing is. So all I'm asking you to do is allow the word of the Lord and the promise of the Lord to get down into your subconscious mind so it can get rooted into your belief system. So yes, I'm looking at this dead child, but I, I believe that it's well because it's what God promised me. So I got to know that it's well. So I got to believe in what I don't see. Faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. But you have to understand that it's, it's, it's what I, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that are not seen. And I can't see my way out, but I believe God. I can't see that I'm going to be a spouse, but I believe God. I can't see see how I'm going to be healed, but I believe God. I can't see my promotion, but I believe God. I can't see me closing on the house, but I believe God. You have got to take those things that are, have not been seen, those things that are not tangible, and you have to stuff it down into your belief system so it can get rooted into your subconscious mind so that you can walk that thing out so that by action, by prophetic action, by prophetic behavior, by prophetic instruction, you can call that thing as not as though it was in through your action. You, you walk out some things prophetically in your life. This is something that I have been doing before I was able to put language on it. I walk that thing out. I know what y'all told me. I understand it. It, it, I, I, when Donald Trump uh, used to own the Miss California pageant back in 2013, I wanted to run for that pageant but with everything that was in me. And everybody who was picked was 5'10", 5'11", blonde hair, blue eyes. Can you imagine? 118 pounds. And here come my little thick, brown skin, 
five foot four and a half on a good day self, thinking I'm going to run for this pageant. But it was something that made me believe that I can do that too. Now, I had a destiny helper, which was my mother, because when I originally signed up and I got a call back, thousands of people applied to the Miss California pageant, and only a couple hundred people went. Out of the couple hundred, maybe let's say 200. Out of 200, it may be four African-American girls that, that won. Everybody else is, is non-melanin. So let me put it in perspective. So I walk into the, for when I apply, I get the call back to come audition for the first round of auditions. I walk in there. Everybody is giant. They're 5'10", 5'11". They're thin, so very thin. They have blonde hair, blue eyes. They look nothing like me. I walked in, y'all, and act like I, 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 I mistakenly got the wrong address and walked out. And I called my mother, and I said, Mom, I'm probably not going to do it anymore. Um, she's like, why? I said, because none of the girls look like me, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get into it. And my destiny helper, who the Lord will always allow you to have on this journey if you let them. If you let them, remember we talked about it in the beginning of this prayer, some of your defense mechanisms are a repellent to the people that God is trying to use to get you from here to there. Some of your your your, your things that you use to, to prevent you from getting into the hands of your enemy has now imprisoned you. So you got to lay down some walls. you got to open up your horizon so that you can let in who God is sending. I understand that you're trying to fortify yourself because you've let in so many bad people. Now you're trying to protect yourself. I get it. But remember, now you're wiser. Now you're older. Now you have the maturity to be able to filter people to know, did the enemy send you or did the hand of God send you? Were you sent to destroy me or were you were you sent to help me? But if you're no new friends, no new, uh, no, I don't want to connect with people, you are, you are limiting how God can really work in your life. So my destiny help with my mother was like, no, you're going to go march yourself right back. You done got this far. You didn't apply. They done wrote you back. You done had your phone interview. Now you're going to come here and you're going to go in there. So I went back in there and I went to the, to the, through, I made it through the first round of interviews. Um, the first round, yeah, interview. Then I made it through the second round. Long story short, I was able to run in the Miss California pageant. Now this was a very uh, 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 competitive pageant and a very expensive pageant that back then I didn't have the money for. I began to inbox every celebrity that I could think of. Nicole Murphy, Eddie Murphy's ex-wife, ended up giving me a dress that was one of the dresses that she wore for her uh, for the whatever Grammys, Oscars, whatever the things that the actors do. You know, those celebrities don't ever wear majority of the same type of dress. So I was able to get her to donate me one of the dresses that she was never going to wear. I dropped a ton of weight. I inboxed the Kardashians. I inboxed NFL players. I inboxed all kind of people. I was able to get Kevin Hart's manager. He was able to donate and, and give some money. I was able to get a representative from Michelle Obama, and they gave me some jewelry, some diamonds. Now, I couldn't keep them. I, they shipped me the diamonds, and I was going to wear them. I, I wore them for the pageant, and then I had to send it back. Anyway, I don't know where I'm going with the story, but the point is, a, I recognized the favor that was all in that story that we just talked about, walking in your favor. But what did I do? I, I reached out to these people. I found their email looking online all night. I found their uh, their inbox. Now, back then, it was a lot easier to get to celebrities. I inboxed them on Twitter, on, on Instagram, on, on Facebook. I found their emails. I inboxed their representatives. And whatever the case may be, I was able to get a hold of them to collectively get myself in this pageant and to run. Now, I didn't win, but the fact that I was able to make it through all rounds and the fact that I was able to run really was a testament to understanding how out of your belief and out of your intentionality and out of your uh, let me walk in my favor of the Lord can really get you into rooms and really get you into places, but you have to believe. You got to believe, and sometimes you will need help with your belief, because I believed at the beginning. I was so excited when the application got approved and I did my phone interview. It wasn't until I walked into the room and seen everybody that didn't look like me, I said, let me walk myself right on out of here. And so your belief will get you to two things, but you'll also need to allow your destiny helpers when the time is right, when God sends them, they're going to need to help you walk as well and help remind you of what God promised you and help remind you of what you said you wanted for your life and help remind you of who you are and help remind you of the authority that you walk into. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask, Lord God, that not only will you allow us to intentionally walk into our favor on this year and in years to come, but, Father, help us to be intentional about sometimes everything is not all about you coming to us. 
or you bringing it to our doorstep, but sometimes we need to put our stuff out there. And, Father God, many people, many of us don't like that because we feel like, well, I don't want to seem like I'm begging. Or I don't want to seem like I'm thirsty by shooting my shot at this guy or shoot my shot at this girl. I don't want to seem like that, that I'm in need. And sometimes we have this false lens that needs to be removed, Father God, so that we can really walk into some things. So, Father, sometimes we don't even like to ask for help, you know, and so sometimes it really prevents us. And so I ask, Lord God, that you just shake the ground of these faulty foundations, these faulty understandings, these faulty ideologies that we have. Just shake the ground of some things that that are faulty that we need to remove, Father God, to get us to where we need to get to. I remember uh, uh, one of my mentees, I had told her that I think that this one young lady will be a really good friend of hers. And this young lady has like 100,000 followers and she's like really influential. But either way, I felt like their spirits were kindred and they were going through pretty much the same thing and they would be good friends. And so she was like, well, I don't want to reach out and seem like whatever. And I'm like, just reach out. She reached out, hey, let's go do lunch. Well, the girl left her on red. And I know that triggered something on the inside of her. I know that struck a chord to her ego. Like, oh, who she thinking? Because she got a 100,000 followers, she going to treat me like this? But again, I kept encouraging her. Maybe she was busy. Maybe the phone rung when she opened up the inbox and she forgot to come back to the inbox. You got to start talking to those demons in your mind. You got to start talking to that trauma in your mind because it has kept a lot of you off from opportunities. You overthink everything. Oh, well, she was one word in her answer. So I guess I'm, I'm, she, I'm not good enough. I remember somebody had inboxed me one time and they were like, you know, Kendra, I'm not getting your emails. I guess I'm not on the, the elite list of your email. What? I don't have an elite list. It's one list. But you see how the enemy will make you think that because the emails aren't coming, oh, I guess Kendra doesn't want you to come to her event. I guess Kendra has a, a group of people that's a more elite class. You see how easy your trauma and the things that you have been through will, will be a repellent? And the whole time, I have no idea why I didn't come. Maybe it went to spam. Maybe we typed it in wrong. But how about I'll send you the stuff going forward. But don't let that enemy get into your head and make you come up with a scenario that's not even true. So, again, I said, no, maybe she, maybe she, her, her child was doing something. I don't know. But reach out again. She's like, hey, I know, we're, I know a lot of times we're busy and you didn't see, you may have not seen my inbox or forgot about it, but just wanted to see if you maybe wanted to go get lunch. She said, oh, my God, thank you so much for writing me again because I did get distracted and I forgot to respond. And so, Father, we ask for God that you help shake up these things that they, they trigger us. They trigger us and they make us think something that's not true. They make us believe something that's not there. And it ultimately is keeping us in these cycles or keeping us on a level that you're trying to use people to get us to a new level. And so, Father, help us to get out of that. I don't want to ask for help. I don't want to double text somebody. I don't want to double email. I don't want to feel like I'm begging. Help us to, to, to end you and moving in the pace of you, of course, moving in the way that you want us to move for our life. Help us to move boldly and move with the courage of the Lord and help us to silence the voices in our mind that create scenarios that's not there, that create things in our mind that, that is, is, is furthest from the truth. But it's the easier uh, outcome of the situation so that we're not stretched. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sometimes we'll think of a, a scenario in our mind to keep us from really reaching out or doing something that causes uncomfortableness. And so that scenario is an easier thing to live with so we can just stay in comfortability versus being stretched in an area that we need to be stretched in. Some of us don't like to ask for help. So asking somebody to do something and they leaving of us on red, it makes us, okay, well, that's why I don't ask somebody for nothing. You know what? Don't even worry about it. That's why I ain't asking nobody. For, but maybe you asked the wrong person. But maybe you asked somebody and they were busy. Well, maybe you asked a miss and the Lord didn't need, the Lord needed you to come to him first. And so now we created this whole thing. And now we went back to comfortability. We went back to trauma. We went back to the things of old instead of pushing ourselves and allowing your spirit, Father God, to stretch us into where we're going. So, Father, we thank you that we're going to boldly walk in our favor. And we also thank you, Father God. What was the second thing? Help me, Holy Spirit that we will boldly walk in our favor, and we also thank you that we will allow our belief system, that our belief system won't be attached to our vision. We're going to detach 
our belief from our vision. I mean, our belief from our sight. We're going to detach our belief system from our sight. If what we're seeing does not align with the word of God or the will of God, we will not agree with what we are seeing. We will detach what we believe from what we're seeing if what we're seeing does not agree with the will of God and does not agree with the word of God. So, Father, we thank you that we won't have to prophesy to what we're seeing if it's not an agreement. We can prophesy the, the very opposite, and we'll, we will allow our belief system to override what we're seeing. We're going to allow our belief system to counteract what we're seeing. We're going to allow our belief system to turn around what we're seeing in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you. Father, we worship you. We declare all things new. We declare all things new. Welcome to our new month and all things new. Father, we thank you for that divine reset that many of us had on last week. We will reset. I thought it was only going to be a natural reset in our body, but, Father, you reset many of us spiritually. You have reset us a hard reset from last week's fast. I probably think it was the best fast we had all year long. But, Father, we thank you for all the wisdom that you poured out on those prayer calls. And many people inbox me saying that they even heard from you for the very first time. They even got clarity over an 18-month situation they've been back and forth with, and you gave them the divine instruction. We thank you, Father God, that you always step in in the time that we fast and we pray together. I thank you that your hand is on She Became Like Never Before. I thank you for this ministry that you have gifted me with. It is a gift, Father God. It is a gift, and I thank you, Lord God. And I apologize, God, for taking my time to move into this ministry because I was so focused on what people were saying. Well, you didn't grow up in church. Well, you didn't, you're not under this, or you don't have. I thank you, Father God, that I was able to obey you knowing that you kept your word. You told me the Holy Spirit would train me as I go. You told me that as I kept walking this thing out, the Holy Spirit would train me and teach me and, and tell me exactly what we need to do. Now look at us. We're doing conferences. We're doing fast. We're doing a retreat. We're doing worship experiences. Now we're getting ready to start a book club. Father, thank you for allowing your spirit to be over this ministry. It's none of my understanding. It's none of my ideas. It is all you. And I want to continue to let this thing be all about you because the more I kill my flesh and the more I submit myself under to your under your authority, the more their lives will change. Anytime somebody who is over something and they have not killed their agenda and they have not killed their flesh and killed the things that they want to happen, it cripples the people. But when you submit yourself under authority, and it's painful to do so, to submit yourself under authority and kill your own agenda and your own flesh, the spirit is able to break out and shift and change the lives, although it doesn't cripple the people because flesh isn't in the way. Flesh is such a thick barrier that keeps people bound. Flesh is such a thick barrier that keeps people from where God has taken them. And that's why you got to learn how to circumcise yourself. There are some things that God will walk you out of and some things that God will strip you from. But, I'm, but if I could put it on a scale, because y'all know I'm a numbers person, I love to do research. If I could put it on a scale, I would say in life, 30% of things God will strip from you or God will remove from you. 70% of things you will have to do it yourself. And that means taking yourself for a walk in the woods and circumcising yourself. I got to circumcise that part of me that's keeping God from using me. I got to circumcise that part of me that's keeping me from going to the next level. I got to circumcise that part of me that maybe I was able to use it on breast milk, but now I'm on meat. And that part has got to be removed. It was okay in one season because, trust me, God will let you use some stuff. In some, let me help you today if you got some time. God will let you use some stuff in some seasons. God will be okay with your nasty attitude in some seasons. Let me just tell you the truth. God will be okay with you with you uh, uh, dipping and dabbing in some things and some things because he's like, oh, she's on breast milk. So I can't, I, can't, I can't expect too much out of him right now. I can't expect too much out of her right now. So I'll let her keep the little attitude 
for, for a season. I'll, I'll let her keep her, uh, her little dipping and dabbing over here for a season. I'll let her keep that 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 spirit of, of, of whatever for a season. But as you continue to walk with me, I expect you to begin to deal with you. I expect you to look in the mirror and say, no, I've been walking with God too long. It was okay in the first and the second year, and I had a little attitude. It was okay in the first and second year, and I was dibbling and dabbing with people's husbands, and, and I was gossiping over here. It was okay. But I've been, I'm 15 years in now. I, I, I ought to know better. I'm 10 years in now. I ought to know better. I'm three. I'm three years in now. I ought to know better. The Lord has been doing things in my life. I ought to know better. And so now I put up with it for a season. But now I'm trying to take you higher. And so either you can stay here and keep your attitude, you can stay here and keep your whoremongering spirit, you can stay here and keep your mammon spirit, your, your greed, you can stay here and I'll let you live here with that. But if you want to go there, I need you to take yourself in this knife. And go right into those woods and circumcise yourself. I, I know you're bleeding. Here go some bandages. Here go some wet nap. Here go some uh, peroxide, whatever you need. And I'll wait here, but you can't go no further until you deal with that bitterness. You can't go no further until you deal with that lying tongue. You can't go no further until you deal with that gossiping spirit. You can't go no further until you deal with that envy and jealousy. I'm not taking you any further. I put up with it for the season. Because I knew you, you. I got the best that I could get out of you. You laid down, some, and so I let you keep some stuff. But now I'm trying to take you further. And until you're ready to go further, you're going to have to take yourself for a pain, painful trimming over there in the woods. And I'm not going to do it. And I'm not going to send nobody to do it. If you want to go higher, you got to go trim. Here go your knife. Here go your, 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 your peroxide. And here go some napkins. And trim up yourself. Circumcise yourself. You got to cut that part away from you. you got to, I'm not taking it away because you're grown. I'm not taking away because I let you walk with me for a while on breast milk. You are on me. Show me. You 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 want to have all these things that you're asking me for, and you you want you want to ask me for big girl prayers. You want to ask me for big boy prayers, and, and so that means you need to be grown enough to to fix yourself. You need to be grown enough to to have a look at yourself. What part of you am I displeased with? You, you got to be grown enough to be able to look yourself in the mirror and say, huh, what part of me grieves the Holy Spirit? What's that icky part of me that, that God does not like, that, that makes God grieved? And I'm not saying perfection, because remember, God kept using David versus Saul. And we all know David had a lust problem seeing Bathsheba bathing up there on the rooftop and went and summons her, then had her husband killed. David had some some problems, and they were dealing with that lust. They were dealing with that, 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 that sexual side of him. But God still favored and elevated and used him. Why? Because God was able to trust him. Saul, God could not trust him. That's why God had to remove his hair from him. So I'm not saying you'll ever walk in perfection. You'll never walk into perfection. But what I am saying is that you have to stop acting like everything is well or there's nothing that you need to change. And you know God can't trust you. You know you have an integrity problem. You know you have a gossiping problem. Do you understand that gossip defames the name and the character of somebody? You're assassinating their character. You're committing murder in the realm of the spirit when you're gossiping about somebody. You're assassinating their name and their character. You're committing murder. And, and you think those conversations are okay. You think getting on here and talking about what so-and-so posted or so-and-so marriage falling apart. Did you see their child? Did you see their husband? Did you see? Did you see? Did you see? Well, did, did you see in the mirror with yourself? Did you see? with stuff that you got to work on, you're assassinating people's character through your conversation, and you feel like God can use that. God is okay with promoting that. He's not. I'm here to tell you he's not. And that's why it grieves me when pastors and preachers and prophets get on pulpits or get on Facebook Live and say, if you sow this seed, God going to bless your house. If you run up here, I just need you to give me 30 seconds of praise, and it's going to be a check in your mailbox. You can praise until you lose your voice. You can run until you break your shoe. But, baby, if there's some things that you are doing behind the scenes that is against the laws of God, the statutes, the commandments, the rules of God, you will run and still be broke. You will praise and still go back home, and there will be no check in that mailbox. Because, again, there's some things, there's some barriers that you have to break. There's some things that you have to do. And they are far past sowing a seed. They are far past running around and falling out in a church. 
They are strategy things that you have to look and see, where am I breaking the laws of God, the rules of God? Where have I committed a crime in the realm of the spirit? And the enemy is in court, and he is using this against me. And while I didn't gather any evidence or do any research to see how I overcome this, this trial that I'm on, I didn't hire the right lawyer. I thought I could run. I thought I could fall out in the Holy Ghost. I thought I could sow a seed and no, 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 no. Through knowledge, we got to get knowledge, y'all. Through knowledge on the just and live, we got to have knowledge in order to get to these new heights in these new territories. We got to have knowledge in order to take these, these stages and get the, the, the things of the Lord. We got to have knowledge in order to progress. And without the knowledge and without activating the principles of God, you'll keep manipulating and your blessings will be manufactured blessings. They'll be the ones that you put together. And the ones that you put together don't last long. They're like a PPP loan. You manipulated your way in, and then you got a $200,000 check, and it dwindles down into zero. It's not sustainable unless it comes from God. And God doesn't give it unless you have showed yourself approved for that level. You showed yourself mature for that level. And in order for you to show yourself approved and mature for that level, you have to circumcise yourself. You have to look in the mirror constantly to see what can I change, what can I fix, what am I doing wrong. And it's far beyond you saying, Lord, get me out of this relationship. No, you knew that wasn't a relationship for you. You need to get yourself out. You need to take your time and go into the closet and get some instructions and some words from the Holy Ghost and go knock on that man's door like I did and have a conversation with him in the living room and say, listen, this has been, this been real. I didn't have fun, but this is not the relationship for me. I'm so sorry. I apologize. You will have to have that tough, circumcised conversation. God can't do everything. You want him to take the man away from you. You want him to take the sickness away from you. You want him to bring you the influence. You want him to bring you. And what do you do? There's a part that we all play. And many of us won't do our part. We want the Lord to do everything. He's not going to do it. He will assist us. He will help us. He's given us the Holy Ghost. He's given us the Bible, which is our rule book. We're failing an open book test because we won't even read our Bible. That's the instructions of life. That's the manual for life. You want to know how to be wealthy? It's in the Bible. You want to know how to have a good marriage? It's in the Bible. You want to know how to be healed? It's in the Bible. You want to know how to get favor? It's in the Bible. It's all in the Bible. We won't open it up. He's left us the Bible. We won't open it. He's given us the Holy Spirit. We won't even inquire the Holy Spirit. We pray to Jesus, God, Hail Mary, everything else but the Holy Ghost. Every saint, every apostle we didn't ask for, and we didn't ask the Holy Ghost nothing. We got to move from here to there. We got to move. So, Father, I thank you. Father, I bless you. Father, I praise you. And I pray that you all will have a great day. I love you with the love of Jesus. And I will see you on Monday.